Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 459. Wow. <laughs> uh, it covers a game called Beautiful Desolation. Uh, now this really is a beautiful game. I think you will agree with me. It's one of the, really the one of the most fantastic, uh, really artful uh, games I've ever seen, period. I mean, this is just truly a beautiful, uh, beautifully, uh, beautifully aesthetic experience, if you will. Uh, but beyond that, it is an uh, adventure game. It looks a lot like something like Torment, uh, either Tides or the uh, earlier Planescape game, um, or Fallouts. You know, it's got a lot of the same uh, sort of ideas in there, uh, I suppose. But it's really a quite different gameplay experience, meaning that it's more of an adventure game uh, than those uh, role-playing games. Uh, that said, I think if you like those games, you will at least want to check this one out. And certainly, if you are a fan of adventure games, or just like, uh, you know, really intriguing art, and I think that's probably all of us, uh, you really want to see what this game has to offer. Uh, so in this video, we'll be covering the first few hours of it. I haven't looked at any other reviews. I don't know what other people are saying. Uh, so I'm kind of going in cold uh, to give you what that experience is like. Uh, it is an adventure game, you know, so there are puzzles in there. You know, part of the fun of an adventure game, I think, is, you know, discovering stuff on your own. Uh, so there might be spoilers in here. You know, again, it's just the first uh, few hours of the game. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much. I don't give away any um, anything major. But again, you know, if you really want to make sure that you don't see anything uh, that might spoil uh, the, the adventure game experience, then just skip the video. <laughs> you know, wait uh, for the interview next week or, or come back and look at it after you've uh, completed the game yourself. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Beautiful Desolation. All right, folks, so let's get this party started. Finally, beautiful desolation. Let's crank her up, see what it's all about. And as usual, going into this cold, I haven't read any other reviews of this game. I have no idea really what people are saying about it. Through the grapevine, though, I've heard that the artwork is phenomenal. Some really bold ideas in terms of graphics. I'm looking forward to those. Uh, but other than that, I really don't know too much about it. So let's see if we can get this volume a little bit lower. It's kind of <laughs> deafening in the headphones. Uh, yeah, so just look at that. You know, I always say the it's it's a good sign when you're playing a game and, and the uh, the interface looks good. You know, if they've got a good aesthetic going with the the menus. You know, it sounds like a trivial detail, like who cares, but to me it just shows an attention to detail. You know, people that are really putting themselves in the mind of the, of the player, thinking about the overall uh, experience. Uh, so I think that is a good sign. I like there's, <laughs> you gotta have a torch over here. You know, I don't even know if this, I think this is a post-apocalyptic game. You know, I'm sort of seeing, it looks like some ruined buildings there in the corner. Uh, but this interface, it kind of reminds me a little bit of... Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, Riven, maybe? Some of those Mist games, which makes sense. I have heard this is an adventure game. Also getting kind of a Planescape vibe off of this. Maybe even a little bit of games like Dragon Age there with, with the flags. And, of course, uh, the, whatever this is in the middle harkens me uh, back to Fallout. I like this little monochrome font here in the bottom. So, you know, a lot going on here. I could talk about this. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> like kind of a... A weird orb looking thing flashed across the screen but but anyway let's go ahead and start up the game I'm not sure how much of this will be voice acted or not if there's voice acting I'll, I'll shut up so you can hear it that's pretty cool a Bischoff Brothers production now, I was looking at the credits a while ago, and I noticed there's a lot of Bischoffs <laughs> in this production. It's not just those two guys, Nick and Chris. Uh, it looks like the whole family is involved, or at least a bunch of the Bischoffs doing all the, uh, you know, I guess the administrative work, the office, the business side of things at the very least. But I saw some other names there mentioned in, in graphics. I, like, I love this modeling work there doing here. This camera work. <laughs> the dust of nation. Definitely getting kind of a... I'm going to be surprised when I talk to uh, 
these guys if they haven't been influenced by mist. I'm getting that vibe very strongly here. Beautiful desolation. Okay, kind of creepy statue, gargoyle-looking thing with flames for eyes. <laughs> is that the good guy, the bad guy? Is that a god? I have no idea. Cape Town, South Africa, 1976. One of the things I'll be thinking about during this this playthrough is whether I consider this a role-playing game or an adventure game. Because I've heard there's a little bit of discussion around this how to classify it. I'm not doing this again. I know, baby, I know. But Dom's sick. He needs help. No, but I've tried. I've tried so many times. He isn't interested in help. He's your brother, Mark. He's been through so much. Once he's sobered up, we can all talk. Okay, so we've got this vaguely fallout kind of feel here. I'm almost thinking about, I thought about uh, scratches there for a minute when I saw this car. <laughs> this might be sort of a horrific game, we'll see. So we've got a little bit of dialogue, it is voice acted, as you heard. Something about brothers, a drunk brother. And now we have to give some Give a response back. We have three options. Let's see. I know you're right. It's always, it's always. Let's talk tomorrow. <laughs> no, we'll drop him off at a shelter. So you can see what they're doing here. They're kind of giving you a chance to define the type of character you're interested in playing. Uh, let's see if we can be nice. I don't really know what's going on. It's a little bit weird to be to have to make an option like this without any context. But let's just go with it. I oh, know you're right. It's just late, and I'm tired. He needs to know that we're here for him. He needs our compassion and support. He'll be safer with us. Okay, what are we going to do about this brother? He's professional help. I'm not looking after a grown man. <laughs> I'm not looking after a grown man. I'm not my brother's keeper. So he could stay with us for a while. Sure. He can stay with us for a while. But we need some ground rules. I know it will be hard, but we can do this. I'm just glad he isn't out in this weather. I haven't seen a storm like this in ages. Jeez, this rain is bucketing down now. Please turn on the radio. Turn on the radio. Okay, so one way or the other we're turning on that radio. Can you turn the radio on? The traffic report should be on soon. What they're calling the storm of the decade. Reports are in of a complete grid shutdown in the city of Cape Town. Road closures are in effect all across the Atlantic seaboard. Stay tuned for a more detailed report of the top of the island. Do you hear something? Like a, like a low rumble. What is that? Mark, there's hmm. something in the sky. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Characters die already? What's going on? Everything is dark. Ten years later. Concord Aerodrome. So I guess this would be 1986. Great era. <laughs> Everything was downhill after the... I don't know, there were some, a few bright spots in the 90s, I think. But love the 80s. Okay, some... I saw an airplane, I saw a motorcycle. Looks like we're in a hangar here. And there we go, not a... Does that say Fargo Oil? <laughs> okay. Oh boy, what are we in for here? You know, I'll just say this is an adventure game and there might be some puzzles in here, so unfortunately this, it's kind of hard to review these games without spoilers. So if you really want a completely cold experience, 
you should probably not be watching this or play the game first and then come back and watch it because I can't guarantee that there won't be some spoilers in this. All right, let me try to get a feel for what we're up against here. Backy. A Ford pickup with a lot of mileage on the clock. Looks like it needs a wash. So I guess I can click on that. Nope. Right click. Nope. I guess that's just flavor text. We have something flashing over here. It seems like I should be able to move the camera around. Doesn't look like I can move the camera, just move the guy. Uh, the Bray, Bray Grill, <laughs> whatever the heck that is, I don't know. <laughs> Black with old grease. What is that little thing running around? It's kind of cool that it sort of does this weird green thing when it's off camera. Let's see, what does that say? Callan Tours. The glowing sign advertises Callan Tours. So this is what Don's been doing with this health the past few years. And we've got a tour helicopter. The only way to reach the Penrose is by air. Tourists will pay big bucks to get there by chopper. So I'm, I'm kind of digging this. I like that they just throw you in here. you got to figure out what the heck's going on. At least they have data boxes here. You know, I'm going to see if I can turn up the volume just a little bit on that on the voices. Let's go ahead and crank that up to eight. Okay, so we have an arcade there. Don has high scores on most of these. Bet I could still kick his ass at Pong. Okay, I'm gonna guess the stuff that with the eyeballs flashing is probably stuff that I have to click on to advance the plot. Cheap cracked red leatherette with a waft of stale cigarette smoke. Okay, and then along the bottom here, looks like we've got inventory. Oh, that's nice. You know, a nice quick responding uh, interface. So what is this? Unpowered agnet, agnate retina. I sold everything I could to buy this agnate eye. I just need to hook it up to a cheap battery, and we're in business. Hope it was worth it. This item can be combined. Drag over other object in inventory. Okay, so I guess there's inventory combining in this game. Let's go ahead and close that. So that just pops right up there. Keep it on the screen as I'm walking around. That's nice. That's a PDA. Is there a pit boy, if you will? See device interface. No connection found. Maps. No maps loaded, so I got maps there. Conversation review messages. To do list. Speak to Don. Help. There's your help options. Quick save. Zoom. Combine. Oh, pretty standard st debug console. <laughs> debug console. <laughs> Probably don't want to turn that on. And we can. Oh, we can so we can zoom out. And zoom in. Also use the mouse wheel. And then there's our main menu. So that's probably about all we need. Let's go ahead and click on this eyeball here. Let's see. Locked terminal. Uh-uh. So we can't do anything. Do I need to use my PDA on it? Let's see what is this? Tour pamphlets. The new wonder of the world. A modern mystery. The Penrose experience will change you forever. Who writes this bleep? That was part of the description, by the way, not commentary by yours truly. Games. Okay, let's see what this is. Connect the TV. So it looks like we've connected our... What do they call it? PDA to the television. A Brief History of the Penrose, Episode 1. A beautiful docudrama outlining this momentous discovery. Oh, so this is how they're going to clue us into what the heck's going on here. Nice! Go ahead and cue this up. Now we'll give them credit for Ten years ago, our graphics. country was at war.
in the midst of our tribulation, like a gift from heaven, the Penrose appeared. An object of untold technological abundance that advanced civilization on all frontiers. Hunger and disease eradicated, energy mastered, and mortality conquered. But there are those who would oppose the might of Penrose allied, dissenters who fear our progress and our power, who would see our world cast back down into turmoil and chaos. There is no place in the world for these heretics, and they will be crushed beneath the heel of the agnate boot as we march towards our great future. So that's pretty cool. Getting some, like, kind of reminds me of some of those, uh, some of the better, like, sci-fi novels from the 70s and 80s. You know, what was the one about the, the picnic, I think? Kind of getting that sort of vibe off of that, but that was cool. I like the... Let's see what else do we have uh, available here. So, pretty neat background. I mean, this is what I'm talking about with, the, you know, a good adventure game like this. They, they sort of intrigue you with the possibilities. So now, now of course, I want to go out and see what all this is about. I have a desire to learn more about this Penrose. They give you just enough to get you, you know, sort of peaked. Without boring you to death with just endless info dump. Uh, so it looks like I can't click on these. Mutated Ninja, age-restricted, baguette music. I don't know, I guess these are just other... A little bit of flavor text. Okay, we need to find old Don. I hope this thing can fly. <laughs> Don would just leave his stuff lying around. I'm gonna hide him here. <gasps> Is that a rat on the screen? Look! <laughs> oh, I love it. I can't fight it, though. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Inventory. Where did inventory go? Don's access key card. Don was never photogenic as a child, and this key card shows some things never change. <laughs> He's got sort of that grisly look. Old dented car. Mechanics tools. You know in an adventure game, you always grab everything, especially anything considered a tool. There's another item. But you never know what's going to be useful. Hey, there's our... Old energy cell. Looks kind of like a battery to me. These energy cells are as common as peanuts. Remember when people used to rely on fossil fuel and nuclear power? Yeah, I remember those those days. Seems like only today. <laughs> okay, I said I could combine these items. Okay, drag over other object in inventory. Okay, let's try it. Powered Agnate Retina, I am a genius. <laughs> I figured that out without even having to look at a walkthrough. Wow. What the hell is this? Yes, this works perfectly. I'll scan the Agnate Retina and unlock the backup terminal on the Penrose. Okay. Let's see, how's our map doing? No maps loaded, so I guess we need to find some maps to load up into that. No. What are you doing? Let's see. Okay, lock terminal. I'm guessing I just click and drag that over. Nope. Mm -mm. Okay, how do I use things? No. Okay. <laughs> It's got, it's got the ID card flashing above it. I'm, I know they want me to uh -uh. use the card. How do I? Okay, come on. No, no, no. Don's access key card. Yes. There we go. Just had to do it a couple of times. 
Uh, Callan Tours pilot appointments logged in as D. Leslie. Date 86. Upcoming bookings non weather extreme. Turbulence expected. Uh, See, so I don't want to page the pilots. Let's read the messages. Keep tourists away from the Penrose for the next 48 hours. If you get one more ticket, then consider your ass fired. Don't test me on this, Leslie. Is that all the messages? So they don't want us to uh, take people to the Penrose. I'll page all pilots, I guess. Uh, logged in. Weather, extreme turbulence. Okay, I guess that's about all we can do for now. I'll scan the Agnate Retina and unlock the back backup terminal. I'm supposed to do that too. Uh -uh. Don's bedroom. Okay. So how do I get to Don? This is still flashing over here. Okay, don't need to do that again. Okay, <laughs> what am I supposed to be doing? There's this flashing, okay. This must be done. What is going on with done? Okay, done. Marky, it's been a while. Can I... I wish you had called to let me know you were coming. I would have cleaned up a bit. You've grown. I've been meaning to stop by. <laughs> you know I hate that nickname. Oh man, I don't know. You've grown, is that sort of insulting? Let's just try the second one. I heard you worked here. I'll be meaning to stop by. I just, you know, haven't. Yeah, yeah, I've been here a while. About two years, give or take. Nice place to keep out of the cold. You look, uh, healthy. But a bit fit, yeah. But as long as I still fit in the chopper, it's all good. It's been, what, <laughs> nine, ten years? Last time I saw you was... The funeral. Yes, yeah, right. So you're out of the chair, at least. That's good. Leg brace. Helps with the pain. It is like crazy, though. It looks good on you, eh? <laughs> Makes you look like a superhero. Still trying to figure out these, these accents and... Where these people are from, and you know they grew up separately. So we got a little bit of a little bit more exposition there too. You know something happened to us. We were in a, I guess, a wheelchair for a while. Maybe this was a mistake. I need your help. I need your help, Don. You're in some sort of trouble. No, no, nothing like that. I have to get up to the Penrose. You're kidding, right? Not kidding, no. I need to get up there, and you're the only one I know who can do it. Why the hell do you need to get up to that thing? You know, I'm starting to wonder, did I miss something? <laughs> you know, maybe there was a title sequence or something I somehow skipped. Because I don't really know. Or maybe they don't want me to know. Uh, I'll verify that in a minute, though. Let's see, just tell me if you can take me there. That thing isn't what they say it is. I just need to know if you can take me up there or not. I can't. I mean, what the hell are you going to do up there anyway? That thing is huge. Where would we even go in it? There's something that it's growing around human tech. It's man-made. I've got the coordinates, I've got the photos. I've even got a military agnet eye for the scanners up there. I just need someone who knows the air. Someone who's been close to it. I run tours, little brother. We get too close and we get shot down. Huh. I know you can get us close, Don. You're a military <laughs> pilot. You can get us close, you can get us onto it. Oh, shit, man. Okay, fine. If we do this, it has to be tonight. There's a storm warning. They evacuated the whole thing. There won't be any chopper patrols in this weather. Flying in a storm like that is suicide. Once we get up there, we'll only have a few minutes before someone figures it out. I only need to get a backup of the data. Once we get back, we can blow this whole thing wide open. Just tell me one thing. Why the Pendros? Why that thing? You know, what was that movie? Where the uh, sort of alien ship came down over Africa somewhere? Like District 7 or District 9. One of those. Let's see. You know why? I need to know what it is. I want to know who brought it here. I want to know all this stuff. That thing's arrival disrupted everything. I'm going to figure out who brought it here. 
Okay, I guess that's it for scene one. Restricted airspace, Cape Town, 1986. These cutscenes are really great. Going dark. Very I can't see anything this way. Where is it? Water on the side of the copter. Don't worry, little brother. He's out there. looking guy. Guess that's our character. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do here. Let's see if I can save the game. Okay, that seemed to work fine. And I'm just gonna quit and go back to the start of this thing, just to make sure I didn't accidentally click through a title sequence. Something that might give me a little more context here. Let's see, we did the new game. I'm just going to completely exit out. Just let this thing run from the get go. You know, sometimes they stick some context, like a little pre uh, title movie. Let's see, Brotherhood. As far as I can tell, that's the start of the game. Video setting, achievements, credits. I need more. Oh, look at the patch notes. Okay, so I guess we're just supposed to know what we know. <laughs> that's, that's good, I suppose. So we know this thing fell from the sky, or I guess there was some some kind of extraterrestrial uh, event. This thing has shown up called the, the Penrose. We want to get onto it. Apparently, we have some kind of insider information, but we're the player that is is not supposed to know what this is. Don't want to make that determination until I am sure. But I, Charlize. There we go. Maybe this is some. What the hell is this investigation? Okay, I got some numbers here. I don't know what the hell is going on. Oh, this is a pin rose. And that's okay. Sometimes these games, they want to kind of keep you in the dark and just gradually clue you in on what, what's going on. This appears to be one of those games. So we'll just try to figure, piece it together as we go. This, this is amazing. Tarps. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> Landing pad. Okay, so I guess we're on the pin rows. What, what was that? Supplies. Looks like somebody left here in a hurry. I wonder if there's a way to... Let's take a quick diversion here to see if there are... Let's see, where was that screen that had the... The keys on it? I think it was in there. Nope. Continue. Pretty sure the codex here has a, uh, or maybe it's the PDA. Okay, there we go. Um, let's see. Is there a way to see all the stuff? Debug console. Take screenshot. Use item. 
Open all descriptions in area spacebar. Okay. There we go. So we just hold down the spacebar and it'll show us everything. Charts. Aircraft carrier. The military blockade has been established below the Penrose. Okay. This kind of has the Torment the Tides of Numenera feel to it. I guess that's the thing we're looking for. But it's locked. Let's see, I guess we use this. Security protocols have been disabled for maintenance. Security and control. Device interface. Maps. Okay, I guess security protocols have been disabled for maintenance. Connect to terminal. Ah, what's this? Well, we need a four digit code. Where have I seen such a code? Where was that? The codex? So, 1192. Let's try that. Oh, that didn't work. I will try the other ones. Wrong thing. 8738 and 7734. 8738. <laughs> Can I remember a number for two seconds? That didn't work, so we have one more to try. Wait, 7734. I might have to double check these. There we go. Uh, welcome, Director Walter Corman. Okay, so I guess we've hacked into the system now. Manage backup procedure. Load data to buffer, load disk to drive. Get what you need and get out of here. Prepare disk. It's here. Let's go. What are we doing here? I don't know. Prepare data. Load disk. Complete. Prepare the drive. Prepare the disk. Run the backup. Okay, I guess that worked. Strange delagmites jet from the glistening wet ground. Good to see they double checked that to make sure they had the right version. Stalagmite stalactite. I got it right. Let's see, a metal walkway leads to the upper laboratories. Ah. All this time, they said it wasn't man made. Was it man-made? Hard to tell if these dark growths are emerging from the probe or boring into it. So what the hell is going on? Is there a data disk? Yeah, <laughs> cool. It looks more like a tape to me. Yeah, what Pulse, is this? Do not move. Get onto the ground with your hands behind your head. the hell is this thing? We're just here for information. Don't shoot, we're unarmed. <laughs> Make us! <laughs> well, let's try the... Don't shoot, we're unarmed. Hey, don't shoot! It's just two of us, we're unarmed. Control. Control, come in. We have two trespassers at Derisite. Over. Do you hear something? Interesting choice of voice for a robot guard dog. Doesn't look healthy. <laughs> oh, did I choose the wrong option? Are we dead? We have very, very classic Sierra move. You're dead. Start over. I'm gonna laugh if it actually killed us. Come in. Over. Oh. Magnet dog. So I guess we're still alive. Let's go check out this doggy. Over. I can't do anything to K9. Wow. 
Man, I tell you one thing, I'm really starting to get into this this artwork. This is really just bizarre looking. For me, it sort what of feels like a torment with a little bit of fallout mixed in. But then it's got it's got its own thing going here too. Stone spire. A towering temple now stands in the middle of the ocean. Weird growths. This thing, it did something to us. Do you guys remember a game? God, that must have been in the early 90s. I had it on the Amiga computer. It's called Dark Seed. And it had this artwork inspired by H.R. Giger. Same guy that did the, a lot of the work for the Alien movies. But that also had some sort of creepy areas to explore. Now let's see, the device whirs away, reading data from its strange surroundings. Scanner. Some sort of scanners. So I guess we don't know what this thing is. Did it come from outer space? Is it come from the future? Is it aliens? Is it humans? Seems like one of the... A country has claimed it, maybe. Seems to be some geopolitical drama going on. Let's see, do we have a map yet? <laughs> they get lost. <laughs> nope. Okay, so it's not super clear where I can move. I'm just trying to move everywhere. Stalagmites twist upwards into the air. Shit, where's the chopper? Uh-oh. A military troop transport is parked where the Callan Chopper once stood. Damn it. It's locked. Okay. Now I was reading that they apparently used Unity for this. They created their own isometric Control. engine. In. Over. I believe it's the one of the brothers did the programming, so I guess he did this engine bit. And the other brother did the artwork and the writing. Control. Come in. And it seems Over. like they've worked well together. I, don't know, I can't ever see uh, my brother and I putting anything together like this. Control. Come in. Over. Let's see. Well, okay, what do we... Maybe I should take a look at our to-do list. A pair of drones. To-do list. I must explore. Okay. I feel like I should be doing something to this dog, you know? Control. Come in. Over. I got this... What the hell? The simulacrum. This we're all Baudrillard here. Ah, uh, okay. It looks like some skulls. That's just really weird looking. Oh, bring it back. Come back. I guess I can't click on it, so I must just have to put this somewhere. Well, let's try using it on our dog. Nope. Okay, so we have a simulacrum. I looked everywhere I can go and sometimes I play games like this and I just wander around forever and then figure out it was like a little area up here somewhere I didn't click on uh, let's see there's a scanner maybe I use that simulacrum thing on that Control. doesn't look mm -hmm. like it where have I not been Weird gross. Can you look in. over there? Magnet dog. I want to go home, Mark. I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home. We've only done one lap so far. Come on, man. We've got to get some exercise. Okay, so you tell me I can't do anything with this scanner? Uh, the device whirs away, reading data from its strange surroundings. God, do you think that would be something important? 
Okay, enough of that. Just making sure that I'm not supposed to be interacting with this thing somehow. It looks like there's some buttons on it. I guess not oh. strange. There's something over there. There's that little eyeball. Make sure I'm clicking on it. Yep. Uh -uh. Okay, let's try to simulacrum on that. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, I gotta talk to Don. Okay. <laughs> Don, you okay? Holy shit, Mark. Look at this thing. Where the hell are we? I always forget about... You just talk to people. You must have blacked out. I know as much as you do. We're still on the Penrose. We're still on the Penrose. We're all the labs. And where the hell is the chopper? I'm going to lose my job over this. Mr. Callan is going to have my ass in a sling when he finds out. You know, I haven't seen anything pop up like, Don will remember that. Or... Don likes that response, so I don't know if these are just choices I can make for flavor or if these will have uh, ramifications on down the line. I'm going to assume that they will. I don't give a sh... isn't it? Uh, we need to get off the Penrose. We've got bigger problems. Look around us, Don. I don't think your job is our biggest problem right now. Yeah, Don. yeah you're right. Okay, so what do we do? Radio someone for help? I'd rather keep our presence here under wraps for now. We need to get off the Penrose. Can you fly this thing? Yeah. It looks like a simple troop transport. Can't be too different from a Chinook. I'll know more once I'm inside. But yeah, if it flies, I can fly it. Okay. So he can fly this transport. We gotta get onto no. it. Where did Don go? He just took off. It's the dead military. Uh, it must be them. Where'd you go, Don? Scan complete. Oh, we went to the next spot point. Click on that. You know, it's kind of weird. I, it's not always clear, like, where to click, but I guess we click there. Okay, warning. 3,937 megawatts discharged. Review report. Oh, is it combat time? <laughs> that looks like a roll for initiative to me. Unclean beings. The holy shrine of Darius has been desecrated. Holy. holy bags of water. Where are we? The human filth needs to address us while defiling the sanctorium of Darius. Accessing additional justice protocols. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ah, they're gonna exterminate all organic life forms. We didn't violate bleep. We meant no harm. Please forgive us. Uh, let's see, we meant no harm. Please, we did not mean any disrespect. Justice protocols loaded. Purging erroneous data. Willfully or unwitty, this thing of flesh has slathered its crime. All over the most holy sanctuary. Its pleas for forgiveness are noted in a log for transcription to the record. Connecting to the record, new information has been added to the queue. Yet still, we are required to purge its unclean presence from this place. Initiating DNA scan. Please hold still. Man. Crichton's not looking the same these days. You know, I'm actually not sure at this point that this game is going to have combat. Is it going to be dialogue only? I, I don't know. Yeah, I just noticed there's like a review button. I guess you can't see it because I'm in the way. I don't feel the need to click that, but I assume it no, would... Wait, please don't hurt us. We've done nothing wrong. Memory at capacity. Rewind. Please defrag to free up memory. Unloading justice protocols. It must be still. It must be grateful. But the last thing it will be old with its wet human eyes is the mighty Darius. It should be honored that its blood shall adorn Agnite armor as we carry out the will of Darius. Yes, very honored. <laughs> is there anyone else we can talk to? Yeah. Now wait, is there anyone else we can talk to? I can explain. We did not mean to come here. 
Prepare to execute kill command. Death is the only atonement for its crimes. There is no other way. DNA sequence. I'm not liking key. this new version Pencil of Ring. Kill command. The sweet task houses no mutations. How strange. The ascendancy will want to hear of this. Initiate contact with ascendancy. It is a lucky flesh set to have cheated death so narrowly. Captain Fussell, ready the transport and set course for the bulwark. I'm a lucky flesh sack. Yes, I am. The ascendancy, the bulwark, no mutations. He has so many questions. What do you mean I have no mutations? Memory limit exceeded. To purge memory, please return to charge rejuvenator. This noisy meat has tried my patience enough. Noisy meat. I do not marry. Bring the fat one and the agnate dog. It can be used for spares. Ah. This guy ain't too friendly. Hey Siri, what the hell? Call my brother the fat one? I don't know if the vibe there is supposed to be Sinister or Terry Gilliam. I'll tell you one thing though, these cinematics are really, really nice. great crashes not as in crashing to the desktop I mean crashing stuff really good modeling and animation new frequency done okay what <laughs> so somebody shot us down I'm guessing we're about to meet the resistance forces Transport's down. We've got a flashy over here. I can't believe I survived that crash. Fatal error. Agnet override required. Okay. Another locked terminal. Mm -mm. Can't use that on it. Now we have a flashing thing. To s supposed to use the radio. Okay, use the radio. You know, radios save a lot on animation. Anybody hear me? I'm on it. This thing is useless. Don, Leslie, can you hear me? Don! <laughs> Don Leslie, can you hear me? Don Leslie. Mark, Mark Leslie, Marky. I'm hurt, but I'm all in one piece. I'm back. Uh -huh. Some sort of petty satellite. Can't make anything else out. I don't know if I can get to you in time. I'm on my way. I'll try to find you. I guess we should be honest. I tried to find you. Try not to die. Try not to die. Try not to die. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break here. I am ready for some lunch. <laughs> I'll come back and we'll see how much further we can get. There, right, let's get this show back on. Over candies, I thought I'd share these briefly. Those are kind of cool. I've never seen this before. This is Choco Choco Rocks. <laughs> Chocolate Chunks. Kimmy Candy. So they actually do look exactly like little, like just little gravels. Gravel bits. I mean, it's it even feels like gravel. If you just 
you, know, you could you could give these to me. I would never imagine they're <laughs> candy. <laughs> Probably not the best thing for kids. Little kids might actually have to eat these and go out in the into the driveway and start eating some gravel. I don't know, but go ahead and try those out. Well, pretty good. Kind of a uh, what does that taste like? And it's sort of vaguely chocolatey. I think this candy, though, I'm going to be honest with you, I think it's more about the aesthetic <laughs> uh, than the, the taste of it. And also I have these things. That Pocky? You know, I think I've seen these in the box before. never actually had one. Chocolate cream covered biscuit stick. Why don't we try that out? And that maybe this will give me the calories we need to continue our little quest look at that it looks like a little wooden I don't even know what this looks like so that's a Belgian what do they call this a biscuit stick okay well I've lost my pocky virginity <laughs> You know, that's actually pretty good. Kind of like biscotti, I guess. I like the fact that they're nice and uh, nice and thin, so you could probably have, you know, like 20 of those things. Imagine just taking the whole box and being like... Okay, where were we? <laughs> Pocky sticks, you're probably laughing at me. Ah, uh, what is this? Locked terminal. Happy birthday to... Uh, Chris, by the way, I don't know if he watches this, but just in case, meeting your candy, bud. <laughs> Campsite. A ramshackle camp has been built using old army tents and canvas sheets. You know, I will admit, I was curious enough, I wanted to see, I was looking for like a manual, or to see if there was a... Uh, you know, information about the storyline on the website or anything. I didn't find anything like that, but I did see the game described as punk. So that's one of the adjectives they use to describe this punk aesthetic. Not steampunk, but just punk. Just flat out. <laughs> just flat out punk. What did I pick up there? Okay, so anyway. Let's just explore around a little bit. Nice birds, fog. Man, look at the detail on this. Look at that palm tree. Look at this old overpass. This bridge. This bridge is overrun by weeds and vines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm glad there was that description, man, because I, I had no idea. It actually looks like it's overrun by uh, by ivy and, and moss. So we've got an eroded pillar down there. This, The concrete pillar has been worn away with time. Wait, are we, are we on it or <laughs> under it? What? Wait. Oh, I thought I was on top of the overpass. I'm, I'm underneath it. Oh, God. I bl blame it on the Pocky. Okay, what is this? Like blood on the ground? Okay, there it looks like we've got a... What on earth? Sort of half-baked Scorpatron. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the, that's the guy that shot us down. Yeah, let's talk to him. Or her. Ah, or it. You survived and unscathed. You were still strong, a child still strong. Survived? It was you caused that crash? It was the explosion that caused the crash. Ah. And I caused the explosion. So I suppose I did cause the crash. This time. So is this his face, or is that 
A mask? Man, this is awesome though. Look at that. Man, I feel like I'm inside, you know, one of those cover paintings on those classic like 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, sort of the weirder science fiction novels. Yeah, I used to just love looking at that artwork and God, what was that one? You know the game Blood Money? That that artwork on that? I can't think of the name of that artist, but I've always loved that that look. Vaguely creepy, kind of a heavy metal uh, magazine style. They had some of the similar kind of surely. Love it. Okay, anyway, back to business. I need to find my brother. I should kill you. Probably don't want to say that to this guy. I think he's already dead anyway. We could have died. Let's see. I need to find my brother. My brother. I have to find him. He was pulled out. I think I saw a parachute. Ah, your brother. The other. Yes. He is certainly alive. He always lives. Always lives. Unless he doesn't. Is it not better to die a meaningful death than to live a meaningful life? I'm sorry. I was asleep, maybe. Is this a dream? No, not so. This is now. I'm tangled up. Well, that makes two of us, bud. <laughs> what the hell? That was a pretty good line, though. What was it? Is it better to live a meaningful life? For a meaningful death, that, that's deep. See, the Penrose did this. Where am I? Yes, where am I? What game is this? Tell me where I am. 33.7193 degrees south by 18.4. Oh, that clears that up. Three degrees east. Milkbush Ocean Wall. The where has stayed, but the when has changed. I'm not certain, not certain how many days have passed. <sighs> I think I may have been asleep for some time. I'll say. But the wreckage <laughs> Can't eat some moisturizer. Sensitive. Bad. There is so much data, so much. And we need to get to work. So I'm starting to suspect that we have traveled in time. I'm just going to Make that my hypothesis. Please tell me how to get to Don. My brother had better be alive. You said that Don is alive. How do I get to him? Please. Such care and compassion. I had forgotten how much love thrives within you. You will find your brother. And if he's hurt, we need to hurry. There is a vehicle to the south that is in need of repair. The parts you require are aboard the crashed transport. Once the craft is ready, you will need a new net. No net. Now I need to go. This feels wrong. Wrong. The strings are still so tangled. Go. Now. That's what I told the pollster. A pollster a while ago that showed up at my door. Use that exact same line. Worked. Worked well. Okay, well this is beyond weird. I'm almost wondering if that is like me or my character in some future version, some alternate version, I don't know. Okay, so they want me to go back to the transport for some tools. But you know, I'm just going to just marvel at the at the scenery here. Is it just gorgeous? I mean, right? <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. It's like we sort of have this alien landscape over here, this sort of tropical. Even like all the different kinds of textures on these leaves. Oh my goodness. It's like an episode of Gardener's World or it's the Twilight Zone or something. Let's see, is my map working yet? <laughs> There we go. Okay, Vesta. What? Okay, so I guess we're there. I'm not 
sure what button what that does. Nope, push. Okay, well that was I guess a little bit helpful. <laughs> oh, I've already lost track. What are we supposed to be doing? PDA. Where is that Agnate? I know it crashed with me. I must find and help Don. Well, I know the, the guy back there mentioned something about the tools I need or at the crashed transport. So let's let's go back there and see. Yeah, there we go. Magnate override required. Let's see. So where are the tools? No, I don't see any, anything over here. Ruined building. This old industrial building has become a living greenhouse. Oh, there we go. We found the engine. Uh, the transport engine is mangled beyond repair. Okay, so I guess that's... Maybe we have to get to this Agnate Ripped cars. <laughs> Those cars are pretty wrecked, I'm gonna tell you. I don't think we're gonna get those running again. Must be something to do. You know, you think I could do something with this thing. Again, I'm guessing there's some spot on the map I have to get next to to trigger the next event. I see strange glittering insects skim across the water surface. Okay, oh, there we go, root bridge. <laughs> I knew there was some spot we haven't been to. We're going tree roots, form a bridge. Yes, look. I bet you I need to get something inside this tractor trailer. What the hell is this? Corridor? Crashed truck trailer sprawls over the edge of the overpass. <laughs> Man, it just crashed just right, too. What happened here? Abandoned vehicles are at a standstill on the overpass. <laughs> this is the longest traffic jam I've ever been in. Oh my god. You know, it feels like that sometimes. Uh, milk, milk bush seawall. Is that a zone? I guess that's another zone. Ripped cars. Okay, I guess I need to go to that next area. I don't know how well you can hear the sound effects, but they actually put in the different sounds for my footsteps. It sounds different if I'm walking on the grass. So I'm telling you, it's just, it's just attention to detail like that that really makes the game interesting. You probably wouldn't even think about that. But it all adds up. See, the rusted body of a car is barely visible beneath a dense growth of vines. You know, something else I like about this game so far. You know, it's got lots of descriptions, but it's not like these long, you know, <laughs> two or three page long descriptions where they're trying really hard to be all, uh, you know, like flowery, flowery with the language, poetic or whatever. It just tells me what it is. 
Yeah, I appreciate that. Now what is this? It's like a uh, a pencil. Something writing. Okay. Uh, codex updated. The codex has been updated. Have to go to the RPG codex now. Because that's not the codex they're talking about, huh? Seawall. Was he like sketching these things? Did he write that? Did he make that sketch just then, or is this things that he's finding? I guess we don't know. Animal remains. Oh, look at the size of that thing. Yeah! Looks like something off a of Blue Oyster Cult album. This old carcass has become a cradle of new life for shrubs, insects, birds, and small rodents. Ah, that's the cycle of life. I'm kind of glad we don't have smell of vision I don't know about you, but I would not want to be smelling that thing. Uh, just... You know, I'd almost be willing to play this even if it was just like a beta thing where you could just wander around and see what the guy has done in terms of artwork. Greenery sprouts from every crevice of the building. Yeah, I'm hearing like a Geiger, Geiger counter type of sound. Again, I don't know if that's something that I'm making, my character. <laughs> Let's just keep going down this path, I guess. Can't quite... You know, that's the fun of these isometric engines, you know, there's... I think the artists do this on purpose. They'll give you like a little corner or something where you can't... You can't scroll down and look at it, but... You really want to, because it looks cool. A little teaser. Okay, what the hell is that thing? Nope. Bush Beach. I don't know if I want to go to a new area yet. You know, I keep hitting the M key. <laughs> Just out of habit. <laughs> like, I need, like, a bigger view workshop. A well-equipped mechanics workshop housing tools and salvage scrap from the surrounding wrecks. Here's another codex entry. Codex updated. So it doesn't automatically pop up the codex. Oh, look at this. What in the hell? <clears throat> Tear, tear, slingshot device, tether device, red mercury, array control pylon unlocked. Okay, I guess I need to do these three things to unlock the array control pylon. Something over here. Add component to Buffalo. Select item from inventory and click here. And by here do they mean? Okay, I guess that's not right. What am I looking at here? What is this thing? Huh. Okay, so apparently I need to get some some components. What the hell is that thing? No, not a whole lot of music going on. That's fine. I, I like the, uh, you know, just the ambiance. Mind choke car. Okay, what do you think? Where should I go next? I guess I need to go to that other area down here. Where was it? I thought it was down here. And 
how many years do you think it would take for civilization to look like this? <laughs> 50, 100 years? 200 years? A week? <laughs> I don't know. It's a pretty cool show about that concept. Uh, the skeleton of a large ship creaks softly in the ocean breeze. A large, like, ocean ship? Hello? Is anyone here? You know, it's, I don't think it's an exaggeration just to say, man, this is like living art. Just look at the detail on this. Just gorgeous. Okay, I'm supposed to talk to... Is there a dude there? <laughs> I guess there's somebody behind that sign. Oh, it's what our dog! What the hell did you do? Are you blaming me for this? This was certainly none of my doing. So we found our agnate friend, our canine unit. Listen here, toaster. <laughs> We've got to work together. So is that a Fallout or a Red Dwarf reference, I wonder? Or Wasteland. I didn't cause our crash. We need to find a way out of here. You know, let's go with the toaster. Let's go with this toaster option and see what happens. I'm not even sure this this does anything. Listen here, Toaster. You're the only thing I know around here that isn't trying to kill me. We must work together. Work together with a terrorist like yourself? Never. Hey. I'm not a terrorist. I'm a journalist. Terrorist, I was trying to journalist, expose journalist. whatever the hell they were doing on the Penrose. I know you're probably a bit shaken up. But we need to find a way out of here. I am not shaken up. I am attempting to initiate contact with Control, and until Control is updated with our current SID rep, I am not leaving. Control. You know, did we even know that we were a journalist until this point? So we're a journalist. Our brother, I guess, was on some drunken hiatus for a few years, and I guess he's been away from us long enough to develop a different accent. And now he's giving, like, helicopter tours of the space station-looking thing. I feel like I am getting a... <laughs> slowly putting the pieces together. It's taking some time. See, your best bet is to come with me. Fine, stay here and rest. We have a better chance of surviving together. We have a better chance of surviving this if we work together. All right, I will join you. But I will not be treated as a pet nor as a tool. I will accompany you until I can make contact with Control. And when we get back... You will be placed under arrest for trespassing on an active military base. Oh, that's a meat cute. Yeah, you know, we're gonna fall in love with our agnate friend. Whoa, look at that. Don't. Is that? <laughs> I don't know what that word means. I, I think I might know what it means. So we can call her a tin can. That's not very nice. Let's see, let's get off this beach first. If we get back and you still feel that way, I'll go quietly. That seems like a noble answer. If we get back safely and you still want to arrest me, I'll go quietly. Let's go, civilian. I'm on your six. You know, that's one nice thing about a game like this versus the role-playing games. You know, I don't know about you, but every time I'm playing a real tabletop game, I can never think of something clever to say just right off the cuff. You know, it would be great if I had just a list of options to choose from. See, so lush green palms dapple the beach with shadow. You know, it must be one of these guys must be a gardener. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like they're aware of things like plants in shade versus plants in direct sunlight. Who would have thought that, like, gardening knowledge would have something to do with game development but I think it does slow down I'm stopped <laughs> a small rowboat has come to rest in the leafy oasis so so I guess this this like this whole thing was a lake or a pond or something or a ocean under the water man it must what is going on over here what was that
Man, what is this? Like those? <laughs> you know, I'm starting to get that that feeling, you know, like this is something special. You know, I feel like I'm just wandering around in this very detailed painting. Okay, maybe since I have my, my little doggy friend. Do we ever figure out her name? Is it just Agnate? Agnes? You know, even though this is an adventure game, that at least so far I really don't have much inventory. I mean, if you look at this inventory, it's got a bunch of slots. You think I'd be picking up stuff all over the place. But nope, I guess I don't want to clutter your inventory. Oh, look, I can get over here. Okay. Oh, look at that. Looks like a certain scene from Star Wars, doesn't it? An old fishing trawler is half submerged in the white sand. Yep. I'm thinking this used to be, at some point, kind of hard to tell because you got this stuff. Is this all underwater? Is this just an old scrapyard? I don't know. It's dry dock. Go back to the sea wall. I think we bring the dog back to the... I mean, let's bring her back to the ship and see if she can help us somehow. Good animation on her. I wonder if she'll be making little comments about things. That's always fun. All right, all the way back to the overpass. All right, moment of truth. Now I can talk to her. I've got a frequency. It's not control, but it is something. This troop transport has its own sentience. It is dying. I do not know what to do for it, or what to say to it. So this troop transport is sentient. Uh, just shut it down. I don't know how to help either. It's got something we need. You know, we probably don't want to say to one robot, just shut it down. <laughs> Let's do the second one. Well, I don't know how to help either. I don't know what would help a dying Agnate. It's broken. Split in two. It is slowly fading away. Hello. I'm here. You're not alone. Not alone. You are not alone. Let's get a move on. Let's get a move on. <laughs> uh, can it make a backup? We can't save it, but we'll stay with it. That's, that's, that feels right to me. Let's do that one. I don't think we can help save it. But we'll stay here with it. It's gone. It's just... gone. I'm sorry. At least it heard some kind words in its final moments. I know this is hard, but I need access to its diagnostics. I suppose it is what must be done. By the way, I'm Prototype Zero Zero Combat Helper. You can call me Pooch. Mark. Mark Leslie. Ah, Pooch. So maybe if we play our cards right and make Pooch bring win her over to our side, she won't turn us in. <laughs> I think being a little uh, nice to her and friendly and what's the word? Uh, showing some empathy will get us a long way. So we'll try that out. Instead of the uh, the butthead approach. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? Connect it. Oh. Where do I press on this? Let's see, life form containment. Eject avionics data bus. 
Just what I always wanted. And we've got a avionics data bus and a simulacrum. Now we're cooking. So what does that mean though? I guess we can go back to that weird crane looking thing. Will they call it the buffalo? I like that he can run pretty fast too. That's a Buffalo Troop Transport. Buffalo Troop Transport. Well, there's our. I guess we had that. Okay. But we still need a neural network. He's been on the dog, maybe? Or the pooch? Nope. Hmm. Well, that's one of the components, but I don't think that's enough. We need a neural network. I don't think I can just take pooches. Old warehouse. Oh, look. See you leaving. Footprints. <laughs> Look. Oh, that's cool. So neural network. There must be some other spots I haven't explored yet. So let's just keep on exploring. That's the milk bush sea wall. Where haven't I been? Ooh. Wait. You said, oh. I'm not sure why she said, oh. Where's the beach? I don't think we want to go surfing. There's an item over here. The debris of distant cities has washed ashore. That's something. Gold plated hood or gold plated hood ornament. The thin coating of gold is worn, but it still might be worth something. What the hell? Heck of a hood ornament. I wonder if that's a a quest item or just something kind of fun? An Easter egg. Okay. I'm going to have to go back to our... You know, I feel like there must be something over here, but... Do I have to, like, trap that bug or something? Let's see. He resets every time. I don't know how I would do that with the gold plated ornament. Let's see, what is this simulacrum? I still don't have any idea what that is. No clue. Shipwreck. Well, let's look at a walkthrough. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, if I if I wander around a bit too long, though, I'll, I'll pause the tape. I'm not really sure what what to do at this point. Let's see. I need a neural network. It's not that. Not that. Let's look at her codex. That's it's, I don't see anything here about a neural network. Let's 
see if there's any clues in the these drawings. Not seeing any help there. Let's check our PDA. Can't go there. I must find it help done. See, I can't talk to Agnate. So either I have missed something. You know, I hope this isn't one of those games where you just like you have to be at a certain spot somewhere to trigger something. And they don't tell you what that's where that spot is. Doubt it's that kind of game. Now let's go back to the overpass. I've missed something here. Maybe there's a little spot somewhere. Have I been up here? Campsite. Yeah, I've been up there. There's another piece of our transport. You know, I've seen all of this. I don't remember there being any... It's not like I can interact with anything around here. Simulacrum. What does that mean, even? Oh, there's... So, civilian, don't fall in. I have to I talk to them. this uh, robot again. Or the Skeletor. Old Dobby. the avionics data bus. I just need that neural net. Ah, I see that you have found your companion. It is good, good that she survived as well. Once you have found your brother, what do you plan to do? That's the thing about these adventure games is if you don't know what else to do, just go talk to everybody. A lot of times it's a piece of dialogue that needs to be triggered to get to the next bit. Let's see, if he's dead, I'll be back for you. I'll <laughs> find someone to help us. There has to be a way back, yes. There has to be a way back where we came from. Back home. Home? It is strange, strange that you still think of them as home. But yes, there is a way. You will pass the stone into the water and create ripples. The ripples will open a maelstrom into which time itself will spill. Is that all? The poles will move. They can pull the Penrose from being held this place in time. A portal that can hold the Penrose. Something is holding the Penrose here. Something is holding the Penrose here? What do you mean? Yes, it is bound up, tied down, angry, angry, clawed at the confines of its cage. Even if the portal between them now was open this minute, the Penrose would still be bound to this place. The Ascendancy, the Tribulationists, they have it trapped. They worship it, yet they fear that it will leave them. Hmm. To open the portal, you will need to repair the array that pulled the Penrose into your web, and release the spinning crimson anchors that battle that hold the Penrose trapped to our web. <laughs> Enough with all this cack! Yeah, I think I'm gonna choose that. What a load of cack! Okay, enough with all this cack about arrays and anchors. This is ridiculous. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a mechanic. I shouldn't even be here. Oh, my child. The what you gain by achieving your goals is less important than the who that you become while achieving those goals. Not so. This guy's use of pronouns is disturbing. Only one. And this is it. Oh, fuck, man. Fine. Fuck. Og, fuck. Tell me about the anchors. How about in just curse in, like, German or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, my apologies. I'm just reading the, the script. I, I don't know the 
Whatever language that is. Let's see. Tell me about the anchors. Tell me about the array. Okay. Tell me about the array. The three arms Please use iambic pentameter. Together through time. They exist at the start of the string, and now here at its end. So, the array existed back in my time. Yes, but over the centuries, the three arms have been torn apart. They require a power source of red mercury, a tether device that lets them communicate with the past, and a slingshot to rip open time and space. Where can I find all these things? This puppet managed to track the red mercury to an agnet named Grey, who runs an outpost called the Kettle. The other items? You will have to seek those out for yourself. And the anchors? Once the array is switched on and the portal is open, the anchors must be disrupted. I do not know how this can be done, but I trust that you will find a way. Hmm. Now go, my child, go. Overriding safety protocols. Ejecting neural net. What in the hell? Sort of an inception like wrinkle now. I don't know how So, three different anchors. Time travel. Red Mercury. There's a lot going on here. Let's see. I need to get back to that. Buffalo. So it looks like I'm. In about 40 something minutes. Into this segment. I don't know how long I want to go. Let's see if we can get to a good good stopping point before we quit. I don't want to give too much of the game away, but I have to admit I'm intrigued by this quite a bit. I feel like I'm only just starting to scratch the surface of this game, to be honest with you. Okay, there's our neural net neural network controller. Yeah, that looks like something out of Planescape Torment. Yeah. Okay, here we go. That looks like Fallout. Would have been funny if the transport had just flown away. <laughs> See ya! Okay, buffalo modification. Repair is complete. Where's my dude running to? Okay, I guess he knows where to go. Use the radio. I have integrated the buffalo's voice commands into the radio. We will also be able to use the autopilot thanks to the new avionics bus. Thanks, Pooch. <laughs> Don't mess with these things, Pooch. <laughs> I would have figured it out. Thanks, Pooch. I don't think I could have done that myself. Always pays to be nice. Milk bush overpass. Milk bush seawall. Oh, so this is how we're going to get around the big map. Let's see. Well, let's see. I'm supposed to click on something over here. Buffalo console. What in the hell? Vesta. Okay, so I guess we can get around that way. Weird. <laughs> I like this. There's something down here. Let's see what that is. Milk Bush Beach. Okay, so I think that's just where we were before, right? So we've got navigation links over there. 
You can open up this console. What is Warden? Look at her PDA again. To to do list. Grave at the kettle has answers. Yes, where was that kettle though? <laughs> oh boy. Well, let's just start at the top. Warden. What is. What time are we going to get all. St uh, Stargate? Warden access device required. Oh. Okay, let's see about. Erase site 2. Did he mention where the kettle was? I just. was snoozing. Probably. Rusted agnate. The agnate shell corrodes in the elements. Oh, weird. Surely I can do something with this. Man, look at that. Twisted agnate frame in the wild grass. I wonder where they got this name agnate. What does that mean? Strung up in a symbolic execution. And that's not creepy. Getting some strange signals from this thing. Say that again. Got another codex. If this is the concept art. You know, it's a cool way to reuse some of your materials, right? To work your concept art to the game. Oh, it's like an old iPhone. Uh, PA. Array components are missing. Load parts into the receiving tray. Oh, I guess we need to find some parts. Select item from inventory and click here. Hmm. So we don't have whatever whatever it is we need yet. Crucified agnate. Strange. Agnate chassis. Above the metal wreckage flickers a hazy hologram of what the magnet used to be. Yeah. Crashed military. This looks ancient. Yeah, it does. Kind of a weird stone hinge vibe to it. But unfortunately, I don't see anything for us to do here. around okay fallen fort wall hmm. okay well let's make a note of this so we have this console that we need to find some parts for and come back once we've got the parts I guess I use the radio. Contact Buffalo! Am I supposed to call uh, Don? Nope. Okay, let's try the Agnate Outpost. Man, look at the surface of this place. Bring up Mars? Military transponder required. 
Okay, well that leaves Witherberg. Okay, I guess this is where we need to go. somebody to talk to and there's another codex oh, they always grab the codex some stuff sort of diagram here that guy can wait I want to see this ah a clue so we've got eight symbols there I'm guessing I'm going to need these and we have some junk Book of what looks to be an aged satellite or space station shimmers in the heat haze. Heat radiates from a pile of dented machine parts. And we have somebody to talk to here. Yo, Bridgerin, Wagwan! It's a nice machine. Buffalo troop transport, eh? With all four engines working. Uh, yeah, yeah, Buffalo transport. I can see you replace the old busting diesel engines. Smart. Hmm. <laughs> Where am I? It's beautiful here. Yeah, sure, make them think we're... Ah, oh, this place is beautiful. Hot, but beautiful. <laughs> Fred, no need to cover your words with sugar. With a bird, no nothing for right to home about. So how you find your way to this little slice of heaven? With a buffalo, you must see I come from the warden. What do you think about this accent? <sighs> hey, Warden, I'm looking for a crash satellite. If I could get away, I would. Let's do the Warden first. Maybe you could refresh my memory. Who or what is a Warden? <laughs> well, I'm always happy to make a new friend, even when them look slow. Warden, big spinning gateway, out past the city ruins, lets you travel far to the other place safely through the ether. The ether? My friend, you're more than a little slow today. Ether, radiation. Oh, you survive so long not knowing how to avoid the rainbow gas. You need the warden access device in order to get through. I can install a spear for you. For your price. For your price? This guy must be a belter. And if I just take it from you, <laughs> sorry, I don't have any money. Only thing I, oh jeez, you're getting the dog. Come on. Sorry, I don't have money. Ah, uh, sorry, I don't have money, but uh, maybe we could work something out. What about the dog? Spear ignite pods, pretty rear. I'm giving away pooch. You kidding me? No way. No, no way. I would never trade her. Easy, dear friend. Jerry could Even though she wants to arrest me, dog. we'll just overlook but, that. Eh, there's something I need more than ignite spears. At the buried satellite close to the warden, I want the Alexis computer core. I even add it to your map there. Bring me the core, and I'll upgrade your buffalo real nice with a warden access device. See you soon, friend. Okay, that's probably where we're going to get to get into some combat. Gunning house. I'm just kidding about the combat, by the way. I think we would have seen combat already. <laughs> it was going to happen. <laughs> oh, what was that? Huh. I see another gutting house. The guards are towering figures, their limbs embedded with robot prosthetics. I wouldn't want to mess with these boogers. Buggers. I'm picking up this concept art everywhere. Huh. Birds swoop around the looming stone monument. 
Looks like another zone there, Abbey. You guys ever seen Planet of the Apes 2? Not like the old one from the uh, 60s or 70s where they have those guys that worship the bomb. What was the name of that? Return to the Planet of the Apes, maybe? I don't know. That was a good scene, though. See, talk. That's about the only thing I remember. You have the look of a man one. seeking truth. Have a seat and tell Bra Bones what ails you. Bra Bones. Bra Bones. Uh, not interested in talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in talking to roadkill. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you. I'm looking for my brother. Let's I don't know about trying to find truth, but I am trying to find my brother. Ah, brothers. <laughs> what a blessing they are, to be sure. If you have nothing in life but a loving brother, you are most rich. Last time I spoke to him, he said he was close to a buried satellite. Oh. Jarrett, the mechanic, knows where a satellite sits, overtaken by nature, being slowly dragged beneath the ground. But there are two halves of that hole, just like brothers, yeah? <laughs> There's also a buried satellite to the north. My other half, my brother, is at the kettle. He's serving grave. I fear I took from him what can never be returned. Grave. You know Grave? I need to see him. After Grave battled never a horses for the glory of the Dallahan, he locked himself away in his fortress. But I believe he would grant you an audience, Traveller. Thank you for sharing these moments with me. If I may, let me leave you with a trinket that has brought me luck. A map of the world to guide you on your journey. <clears throat> now, if you don't mind, I must get back to my other paying customers. May the Wanderer guide you. The warrior protect you, and the spirit of Inja follow you. Interesting. Yeah, this definitely has a what a Planescape Torment vibe to it. What is going on now? What in the name of God? Holographic dancers. What are they saying? Oh, that is cool. What? The holograms flicker in and out of focus as they sway. But there's some kind of dialogue popping up. Like this weird... Yeah, look. It's like a weird alien font. Oh, that's really interesting. Resting meat. There's somebody else we can talk to. I don't matter. I don't wanna wanna talk to you. So, I need your help. Oh, uh, <laughs> the room is spinning. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> Mama, Mama, is it you? Mama, you <laughs> ask too many questions. <laughs> I haven't said a thing. Fuck. It's... It's... It's inside me. I can feel it. It's behind my eyes. Do you want a party? My name. My name. This is why I don't go out to bars. Ah, okay, that was weird. <laughs> oh, so weird. Oh, it's already stifling in here. A makeshift still. A jumble of copper pipes extends from the tank, thrumming with pressure. Surface of a misshapen skull. We have a fireplace. Do I want to go upstairs? A faint aroma of overripe fruit. It's even hotter up here. A 
warm, stuffy attic is a comfortable place to rest your bones. You got an old armchair, worn mattress, something gold. Credit balance zero. Make a gold offering. Well, I guess we could give it this wood ornament, maybe. It says this is made out of gold. Bada boom. Removed gold plate. A credit has been added to your balance. Okay. Maybe it's kind of like Zork. You know, we go find this weird stuff and just put it in the trophy case. Musty old mattress, sleeping woman, sleeping figure. A young woman is stretched out on a sagging mattress, sleeping deeply. What? <laughs> What is he fanning him with like a big banana leaf? Banana leaf? Weird. Ah, a fresh face with a virgin eyes falls upon me. You have strong arms, a strong back, and all your teeth. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will make a fine addition. Have you come to join in my family? To be a concubine to the mistress of Witherberg. Hmm. Mm, no. You know, I am picking up on one thing though. You notice how everybody's mouths are covered in some way? <laughs> I don't know if that's an artistic thing and they just don't want to have to bother with the uh, the lip syncing. Not that that thing has lips. Ah, this is just bordering on disturbing. Let's see. <laughs> I'm not even going to say thank you to that. Just, no. No, that's not why I'm here. No, a pity. To be in the harem of Mina Witherberg, witness of the tribulation and servant of the ascendancy, is to be a blessed spirit. But if you're not here as a suitor, are you here for an offering of gold? I am sometimes forced to remind newcomers that any treasures they possess belong to us and to Darus. But we are not mongrel savages. We will gladly compensate you with a few credits for your trouble. And with those credits, we also offer wares to help you on your way. Zero day wares? I need information. Enough talking, let's trade. I'd love to look at your uh, wares, but first I need information. Normally, I would charge for information, but for a lovely, strong creature such as you, I cannot help myself. Ask what you will. You know, the more I look at this image, the weirder it gets. It's like we have this photo of roses. Ah. Who are you? Have you heard of an array? Have you heard of something called an array? Even as a witness of the ascendancy, this is something I have not heard of. But I will keep my eyes and ears open just for you. What's a witness of the ascendancy? The witnesses provide gold and technology to the high priests of tribulation. In their infinite wisdom, the Ascendancy bestowed upon us immortality, and all we had to give them in return was meat. If this is a path you choose to walk with us, I can have it arranged. Hmm? No thanks. I lock my meat where it is. <laughs> I'm sure I would. Yeah, like I kind of want to just keep my much. meat to myself. But enough flirtation. Would you like to see my <laughs> ways? I, I don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's just trade goods. Okay, this I can do with. Uh, yeah, I want a blood splattered first aid kit. Heat shielding, electrical shielding. Oh, jeez. Which of these do we need? I don't. I don't, uh, I don't know. Electrical. Sh well, our brother, didn't he say he was injured? I don't know what to get. Maybe we need to get the... Let's just see. I've only got one credit that costs three. Be shocked at the protection. Okay. 
Does everything cost three? Nope, the first aid kit is only one. I'll go ahead and buy that first aid kit. I wonder if that's just a... You know, an adventure game element? Or does that mean that eventually I'll get into combat? <laughs> I haven't given up. <laughs> there might be combat in this game yet. Let's see, I feel like I'll maybe give it around another hour. Okay. Sheep? A small flock of, flock of sheep grazes on the scrubland grass. Hmm. Overlook. Hope I'm not missing a bunch of stuff. These vines smother everything in their reach. That radioactive sound. I'm again. coming for you. What is this? The sun beats down on the hard baked carcass of a gargantuan creature. Oh, petrified is in that kind of petrified. <laughs> I thought it meant like a scared creature. Old bridge. Who's a fisherman, I guess? Fisherman. <laughs> Go away. I just have some questions. Are you deaf? Ishmael says, fuck off. What should we call him? Sorry to disturb you. Where am I? <laughs> you want to go for a swim, tough guy? <laughs> Let's see. Where am I? Oh, sorry to disturb you. Sorry to disturb you. We'll be going. Oh, yeah. Stay. It's been a while since I had someone to talk to. You get used to being on your ice out here. Where are you from? Honestly, I'm not sure. We were on the Penrose, and then we were here. The Penrose, eh? That floating fossil is vulture scraps. Petrified. Only Agnes and their priests think it's anything but a dried up floating bone. But let me tell you, if I thought for a minute you were telling the truth, that would mean your mates were the priests of tribulation. And if you're with the priests, I'd have geen problem tossing you and your dog there into these sewer pipes. You verstaan? Notice he's got a face. Covering so you can't see the lips. Ha! <laughs> Pooch! Attack mode! Yeah, let's see what Pooch can do. You know, I wonder if that would trigger combat. I'm almost willing to do it just to see. It was a joke. I'm telling you the truth, but we're not with the priests. I'm telling the truth, but we're not with the priests. I don't even know who the priests of tribulation are. Well, if you never dealt with the bastards, count yourself lucky. One of those gold-faced poopals killed Red. My poopals. prawn. Best damn hunting buck this side of slag. Popol. That's not a bad... A bad term. They have gold faces? What is slag? I'm sorry about that. Well, I'm sorry to hear about Red. Why did they kill you, uh... Hunting buck? About three years ago. Me and my prawn were out hunting for food for my people. Prawn? The mongrels of slag. We were attacked by Umloki. The giant worm I'd only heard about back when I was a lighty. That thing took my leg, and I wanted it back. Red and I left the noxious base and went hunting. Tracked it across the world. Traveling through the ether is a death sentence to most people, but the mongrel mechanics built these lung suits real tough. Red tracked Umloki here to Vesta. We got it to follow us to the edge of a mountain, and ran its head straight into a rock. When the priests heard I had killed something on their turf, they came for me. They tied me and Red up and left us for the vultures. Red broke free. Chewed off three of his own legs to do it. I was too weak by then. Smart Bug went and found help. The mistress of Witterberg sent some of her soldiers. They took the dead worm as payment. Been eating it slow for months now. Red didn't make it though. He died before I got home. Lost too much fluid. Best damn partner I ever had. Hmm. Some good writing. 
So that's why you're in Witherburg. What are you thinking of doing now? Now that you've killed the worm, what do you think of doing next? I've been taking small contracts. Killed the lion that ate some of ours. Tracked down some mystic animal for the Chisenyama, but I miss red. So now, I'm taking a break. Now I'm fishing. Look after that drone there. Look after your partners. Hmm. I think that's going to be a recurring theme. What do you think? Good luck with your fishing. I don't know if I'd want to eat what you catch out of there. Petrified animal. Let's see, how do we get out of here? I think it's hot that's... out here, civilian. Is that all there is to see? I think so. I am curious what he would have done if we'd have said pooch attack. Let's see, there's the Abbey. Antenna. What are we done here? Let's see. So we gotta find three things. Needs that Alexis data core grave at the kettle. So I think that he said that he had a new spot on our map, right? Yeah, rock face. There we go. Crashed lab. Oh, jeez, which which is it? Uh, I don't. Let's try rock face. I don't know what crashed lab is. Random encounter. Had to fight some worms or something. There's a rock face. Gives you a good sense of scale, that map. Oh, this is lush. Yeah, that's another sign of a good a good artist, I think, is they give you a variety. So not, not everything looks the same. This has been buried here for a while. Sasa. For some reason it won't let me click on that. Hatch looks rusty. What in the world? I guess I don't have a device or whatever it is I need to. Battery depleting. Uh oh. She said her battery was depleting. No, that's just for flavor. <laughs> Looks like an old diagram of some kind. Maybe we have to find a way to keep her charged up. Wreckage. So many questions. Here's some more of these symbols. There's probably a puzzle at some point where I will have to use those clues to put together a code. Oh, there's an item. Gold nugget. That's just lying there. Guess so. You ever just find a gold nugget lying on the ground? That'd be pretty cool. Okay, let's radio on out of here. So, do you have any idea how we got here? From what I've seen and what that thing at the crash site told us. Penrose must have, I don't know, flung us into the future. Don't you have scanners and stuff to tell us where we are or when? I'm not that kind of agnate. I 
think I had long distance scares once, but they were removed. What kind of agnic do you think I am? <laughs> so they just took pieces from you? So they just took pieces from you? It sounds invasive. It is why I was built. It is why I live. They were not trying to harm me. I am a military prototype. Much of my life has been spent under construction. They tried many different iterations and experiments. Restarted me, reset my memory, took away, removed many parts. When the information they got from me became unreliable, they stopped for a while. Unreliable, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you went through that. You are? Yeah, of course I am. It must have been awful. They formatted me too many times. Each time, they left a little bit behind. Residual emotional programming would interfere with each new iteration. It became impossible to tell which data was intentional and which was incidental. I can still feel them working on me, human hands inside me. So no, no scanners. Nothing that could help us determine where we are. But I have my uses. I can perform medical checks. I can detect radio signals. I can detect static charge. If I need to tune a radio, I'll give you a shot. This could come in handy. At least you're good company. Another they're doing a good job in handy. Any advantage is better than nothing. Thank you, civilian. I'm here to help. You know, it feels like I'm sort of bonding with uh, Pooch here. It's nice. I like that. It's. You know, they're not laying it on so thick, but they are giving you reasons to to care about the characters that you're with. Rusty car. An old sedan lurks in the greenery. Done. What did we find, Don? You just yell out Don randomly. We talk to Pooch. This man is badly injured. Broken leg, at least three cracked ribs, compressed spine. But he is breathing. No internal bleeding, but we must stabilize him before we move him. Tough for a human, though. Must have been a hell of a journey down. <laughs> yeah, she just said she can do medical scans, right? I didn't think you'd be able to diagnose injuries. I am trained for field operations. Looking after my squad is one of my primary functions. You think you're a soldier? I am a soldier. I am an agnate neural mapping prototype. The first agnates were radio controlled automatons, but they did not do well in active situations. Then they made the neural maps, agnates that could adapt to anything. My model was programmed to bond with humans. Fear of our squad's death was built in by design. It never quite worked on me, but I retained all the training. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, you're a failed prototype. Why didn't it work? Why didn't it work on you? Unknown. They tried and tried. Perhaps I am simply not built to bond with humans. Why well, program emotions into agnets? Emotions can assist with creative thinking. Fear of death can be a motivating force to push past all limits. They also believe it would improve camaraderie between agnates and humans. Who are they, exactly? Penro's ally. Have you had much contact with other Agnates? No, I haven't. I stayed out of most of the big tech leaps. Why? It seems like Agnate technology was everywhere in a matter of years. Big tech leaps? They freak me out. Yes, robots like you freak me out, Pooch. Uh, they disrupted the world. I just don't know much about them. I'm not sure. I know they did a lot of good for a lot of people. I just never learned much about them. I'd like to know more, though. I'm sure we shall learn much about each other in the future. Now, let's help your brother. Oh, there he is. I think. Revive Don with first aid kit. See, I knew I was supposed to buy that first aid kit. No. Uh-uh. What do you mean, uh-uh? Maybe I have to do it this way. Marky, 
You found me. I was worried for a second there. Kept blacking out. I thought I heard you and the dog, but I wasn't sure. I see this guy's lips are moving, but you know, I think they're probably still working on their lip syncing. You be the judge. Doesn't really bother me, but you know. Uh just don't slow us down. <laughs> it was us. How do you feel? How do you feel? You know, I'm not quite sure what half of those drugs actually do. I feel great, actually. Even the old gut feels like it's cleared up. So where the hell are we? Not where. When. We're still in South Africa. But I think we traveled in time. That's not possible, bro. That shit's for science fiction stories. Yeah, that's just science fiction. It's true. <laughs> Let's ask the talking robot. <laughs> I like that answer. We're going to go with that. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, let's just ask this talking robot here if she thinks this only happens in science fiction stories. So everyone we knew, they all gone. Dead. How? How the hell did that thing make us travel in time? Are we stuck here? Can we get back? Bro? I don't have all the answers. Yes, we can. Yes, Don, we can. I met a sort of, well, a thing that told me how to get back. We can open up a portal back home. We just need three things to do it, and then we'll be on our way back to our time. You know where these things are. Just follow my lead. No, but we will find them together. You see? Because this is also a story of two brothers. No. But we will find them together. All three of us. And a dog. I got your back, Mark. Let's do this. You know, I'm really, really liking this, I gotta say. You know, I'm starting to get to a point where I feel like I'm getting to know... You know, what's the way to put this? I sort of feel like I'm in good hands here with these uh, with these writers and these, these developers. I feel like they're... This old terminal is actually still active. I feel like this game knows where it's going. I feel like I'm going somewhere interesting with this. And that is a good, a good feeling, you know, a game that kind of draws you in, makes you want to learn more about these different characters, different locations. Like, what the hell is going on? It's got sort of this philosophical vibe going. It's got the drama among the characters. Ah, quite a bit of mystery here as well. What am I looking at there? Data Core Remote. Disaster, stim disaster Simulation. Enabled at remote location. What in the hell? Uh, okay, just enabled some kind of... Uh, what is that? A radioactive deer? Parachutes. You know, really the only thing that this game is missing is any any combat. You know, other I mean, not that that's a problem. You know, for the kind of game it is, but you know, if it had a combat and a role playing system, a leveling up system, it would be right in there with games like uh, Torment Tides and Planescape and Fallouts. But, you know, some people tell me that they, you know, that's one of the things they don't like about those games. They don't like all the the combat. It just kind of gets in the way of the story for them. And so if you're that kind of guy or gal, you might actually prefer this format a lot more. It just kind of looks like a one of those games, but really it's uh, more of an adventure game. Okay, so let's see. What kind of lost the thread there? What are we doing? Tether device, slingshot device, repair the array, get back to the primrose, jerk the mechanic. Yeah, we still haven't gotten to this kettle place. 
Is that where we came from? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I've gotten uh, sort of lost here. Where are we supposed to go? Have we been there? Man, look, all these modules. I've got another gold nugget. Maybe we're supposed to go back to that. Make another donation, maybe. No, not there. Yeah, this is the one problem with these games like this. You can easily get distracted and forget about where it is you're supposed to go. End up doing a lot of backtracking, a lot of wandering around. Not necessarily the game's fault. I'm just saying, if you're not paying attention, maybe even taking notes, you know, if it comes down to that. You know, I've played games like this where you, you really do want to have a notepad handy. Just to remind you of things, because you can, you can get a... Uh, you can definitely get turned around and forget about what, what it is you're supposed to be working on. Okay, let's see. I need a drink. Uh-oh. He needs a drink. Wasn't that what got us into trouble with him in the first place? Make gold offering. So we got a gold nugget we can offer. How much is that worth? Two credits. So I think we need three. We can talk to him again. It again. Her again. <laughs> Them again. Oh, my sweet. Welcome back. Are you looking to trade? Hmm? Let's see what you've got. Okay, that's just that. So I guess we need to get these modules to put in our vehicle to get to those other areas. But unfortunately, they require three gold, or three credits, and I've only got two. Okay, where's our buddy? I guess this isn't the place to go. Well, it might be... I don't know if that fishing guy would have anything else to contribute. You know, I like that we can just call our vehicle from any at any time without having to go back to a certain spot. You know, that's a that's a nice time saver. It makes it a little bit less painful if you do need to backtrack a little bit. At least you know you're not going to have to you know, go all the way back across a long series of maps. Okay, well, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know where we're supposed to go at this point. You know, I don't want to bore you by going to each place individually. Nope, brush overpass, beach. Okay, let me just take one more look at this. Uh, red mercury. <laughs> messages oh this is convenient let's see who who was the one telling me where the stuff was no. okay red mercury tether device lets them communicate with the past Okay, let's manage to track the red mercury to an agnate named Grave, who runs an outpost called the Kettle. We can't find the Kettle! That's what we need to find, the other items. You'll have to seek those out for yourself. Okay, so where is the Kettle? Let's see, Jerk, the mechanic. Okay. 
just looking back through these conversations to see where they mentioned the uh, ah there's something I need buried satellite close to D warden okay that's a that's a clue so somewhere close to the warden okay there's the warden oh gotta be this little thing here rock face okay so we need to make a good sweep of this place because it must be here somewhere it's so pretty you know maybe we needed to have the our brother with us it's the sweetie man coming it's the sweetie man coming? Acacia. The tree's delicate leaves whisper as the air stirs. Yeah, these guys are definitely gardeners. Who else would know what an acacia was? <laughs> uh, the, the roast, uh, the here, roasting. The rusting hulk sits precariously on the cliff's edge. Hey. Hey. So this is like a pixel hunting thing at this point. What are we doing here? Ah, yes, this thing. I don't think it did this before. Disaster simulation. Oh, this is what we had to do. Okay, now it's all starting to make sense. That's why we had to start the disaster simulation. Warning: event may result. Event may result in a core ejection. Even <laughs> what's this? What's with this little dancing? What is that? A reindeer? What the hell? You know what? Let's save. Save the game before we start messing around with this. Just to be on the safe side. Okay. I don't know. I'm just going to start clicking. We'll see what happens. H2 pressure beyond limit. CO2 emission high. Phytoplankton process. Cabin atmosphere. Payload warning. Oh my god. It's like a million of these symbols. Is that a combination lock of like 16 things? You're obviously not going to just guess this. Okay, well that's clearly where our codex will come in handy. Let's see if I can remember this. You know, maybe I'll just take a picture of it with my phone. I'm going to be lazy. So obviously now we're getting into like potential spoiler territory, folks. So If you don't want any clues, don't look at this part. But I am just going to keep going here. Taking pictures. That's two. I think I had one more, didn't I? Yeah, there's some symbols on this. I don't think that's the same kind of symbols, though. Man, I love this. It feels so much like mist. I feel like I'm back in, like, Riven. Let's see, do I have that one already? Oh, i got a couple more. Do I have that one? Well, you know, it doesn't hurt to have two. Oh, those are weird. I wonder if it's like just partial symbols. Oh man, I got a bunch of these. Holy cow. Okay, maybe that's enough. Let's see. So I guess I don't know what... This one looks like it's on the bottom. Let's see. Spaceman. 
Where is Spaceman? There's a Spaceman, and that looks like a loading screen. Oh, I think that one was right. Shoot. I think that's it. This one looks sort of like a dropper. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and there's that one. The heart. The robot man. The tree. I think that's the tree. Doesn't quite look the same, but it's about the closest I can find. Now this top rung is a a rocket and a smiley, a weird symbol. <laughs> I don't know what this one is. <laughs> Looks like a little amoeba, a little alien-looking guy. Yeah, that. Okay, now a tree. Uh, tree. And, hmm. I can't tell if that's, I got some weird blobbies here, I don't know. Let's see, that's a, this one's a heart. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. I get it. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> I see what to do. Tricky. Okay, that's the spaceman. That's a... Yeah, that. And a skull. Ah! <laughs> Check me out! <laughs> IQ of 9,000. That's what a lot, you know... That's what's good about adventure games, man. They make you feel smart. You know, you solve a puzzle. You don't have to look at a walkthrough. You know, heck, just take your time. Because it's well worth it when you figure that stuff out. Oh, look, I opened it. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so it must be more to this than that. Come on. There we go. Look, there's a thing. Click on the thing. <laughs> you gotta take the thing. Oh! Get, get your butt back over there. Look, there's an item. Hello? Yes, thank you. Alexis Data Core. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty cool. And we needed that Data Core. Let's see, why do we need that data core? <laughs> you know, I always struggle keeping up with the platform kills. Yeah, go ahead and save it, sure. Um, oh, the... Yeah, this guy, he wants the... Uh, where do we meet that robot? Yeah, that narrows it down, Matt. Ah, uh, let's see, conversation review. That guy, right? Jarek the mechanic, where is he? Oh, it's too bad they don't tell you where they are. Filter by time character. Oh yeah, it's not telling me. I wish it would tell me where the where the characters are. Well, I think it might have been a race site too. Just guessing here. I don't really know. Is that mechanic? It's one of the first places I went to, I remember that. Yeah, maybe this is it. Yeah, I think I just lucked out and guessed right, because I'm pretty sure this is it. Come on, where is he? Maybe I'm wrong. 
thought it was thought he was out here somewhere. Yeah, definitely not right. Scanning for poisons. Somebody out here? Okay. Man, I could have sworn he was out here. Must be at the outpost then. That's one of them. Nope. <laughs> okay, we ruled that one out. Let's see, Witherberg maybe? There he is. Okay. No. Give him the data core. Hey, friend, you're fine, it. Yeah, and it wasn't easy. Ha! I had trust in you, you know. Yeah. Now you want the warden access device upgrade, eh? You betcha. It would be a bad idea to back out now. Yeah. Sure. We did have an agreement. The device for the computer core. You're right, we did. And you did good by Jarek. Friend, you be careful in this world. Being too good, gonna get you killed. But the core is all I need. Let's upgrade your buffalo. Could you take a look at my map? Could you also help me find some places? For your price? No, friend, I just dropped me a joke. Where are you looking to go? I need to meet someone called Grave at the Kettle. And I need to get to Babel. Sure. Uh, friend, I can't do Babel. The tribulation is, them will execute me. But the Kettle, I can do. Kettle is over on Saxon World. Lots to see there. I also added the Anasi Fortress. If you're still looking for things, out here there can help. But eh, that not as nice as me. Nothing they don't do for free. Right, friend. Give me a little time and I get you the warden ready. <sighs> yeah, it's almost as though they don't want to give me anything until I do a quest for them. Thus for <laughs> thus furthering the plot. <laughs> it's almost like that. Okay, so down. let's see, do we need to This device allows travel through the warden network. You know, okay, so I feel like we've played enough of this to give you a pretty good sense of the game. I feel you know, it's the trouble with adventure games for me, just trying to make videos about them. It's it's almost like the more you play them, the less reason there is to play them because you've already seen a lot of the content. That's kind of the fun is seeing this stuff for for yourself, right? So I don't like to go too long with the in the coverage of an adventure game. Uh, and I think I've seen enough to get a good sense of where we're going here with this game. So I'll just go ahead and stop it here and give you my, my thoughts on it. Uh, probably the my favorite aspect of this game is the same that I've seen uh, other people talking about. Uh, Brian Fargo even mentioned it, if you remember, a couple weeks ago, talking to him. And he mentioned that these guys have really bold ideas for, for art. And I definitely see that here. I mean, this is... To me, just as good, if not better, artwork uh, than we saw in the first couple of Fallout games, for example. Uh, uh, Torment, Tides of Numenera, Planescape, uh, the uh, newer Wasteland games, really good. Uh, high quality cinematics. You know, not just I'm not just saying the graphics are good as in they look realistic or anything. I mean, it's just it's good uh, creative 
uh, attractive art. <laughs> you know, I, I feel, I, you know, walking around when you when you feel like you're kind of exploring a painting from inside the painting, you know, that's pretty cool. It's interesting stuff to look at, and you kind of uh, like exploring it. Uh, the storyline here is also quite uh, quite rich. I think, you know, obviously I haven't played all the way through the game, so I don't know how everything's going to end up. But I mean, all the pieces here are in place for a really good uh, sort of. A science, a classic science fiction story with a bit of a, I don't know, maybe a planescape vibe to it, a little, um, what is that, roadside picnic uh, flavor to it. Uh, so that stuff's coming together nicely. Uh, uh, what else do I want to comment on? Uh, I guess if I had to nitpick, you know, what are some things that aren't so good? Uh, nothing's really leaping out at me. You know, you can make the same complaints that you might make about any adventure game. You know, sometimes it's not clear on what you need to do, to, what you need to do to get to the next point. There are some people that you know they hate logic puzzles. They don't want to do any deduction. You know, if that's the case, you wouldn't be playing this anyway. So I don't think that's valid criticism. Uh, so what I'd probably say, you know, here's the problem I think you might run into with this game. You know, if you're coming to this and you see the graphics and you think, oh look, it's you know it's Fallout, or this is going to be like. Uh, uh, torment. Uh, then you're going to get disappointed, of course, because you're not seeing like the leveling system, the uh, the fights with rats. Uh, now I think it's safe to say there's no combat in this game. I'll double check that just to make sure that <laughs> it's like you'd have played five minutes longer, Matt. <laughs> you would have seen the first combat. Uh, I'm going to guess here uh, that that's not the case. But you know, you could be fooled uh, into looking at the screenshots and thinking that's what what you're getting here. Uh, I don't blame the developers for that at all, though. Uh, you should do enough research to know uh, what you're buying. Um, uh, let's see, other possible nitpicks. I guess you could say the lip syncing. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they did the cinematics with another... Uh, I'm actually not even sure what language, you know, what the original language was for this game, if it's been translated. Uh, I did notice the uh, the lips were clearly off on the, on the scene with the brother. So I don't know if that's something they just pre-recorded and it's not, you know, actively being uh, being rendered. So that would be why they have basically masks on everybody or veils so you can't see their their mouth moving. That bothers me exactly zero. You know, I just I couldn't care less. I guess it would would kind of be a little bit nicer, I guess, if it, you know they had that working properly. But just I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm really just reaching, trying to find anything to be critical of. Uh, so I don't think that's um, anything to get upset about. Uh, I like the... Oh, I guess uh, one thing you could say is the music, or lack thereof, you know, I almost feel like, you know, did I accidentally <laughs> turn the music off? <laughs> you know, here's some there. Let's just make sure. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? Yeah, so here's some music there. Let's go back to the game. Oh, so there is. Was that music playing before and I just didn't hear it? Oh, well, let's do a little bit more of the game. Let's see here. The kettle. Now I am hearing music. <laughs> Maybe I just had it turned down too low. Oh, man. Okay, what is this? Go to the, go to the warden. Activate the word. Yes. Yeah, but just look at these cinematics. I mean, this is just triple A quality. I mean, that looks better than what you see in Stargate. <laughs> this is the TV show. <laughs> I mean, completely awesome. If you were studying, if you're interested in uh, doing artwork and graphics, computer games, I mean, you could do a lot worse than to imitate what you see here. And yeah, these developers, I'm going to have uh, these developers on soon. We'll ask them about it. They, uh, you know how they did all this. If they've got any techniques to share, any insights. Because I think they just did a fantastic job. Okay, so now I am hearing 
music for sure. It's kind of weird. I didn't have it off before. See, I had it down to three. Yeah, so listen, it just turns it off completely. Yeah, that's a, that's a kind of a bug, I think. So yeah, you have to turn it up to six or seven. I mean, it's not playing at all in those lower settings. So you'd think if you put it down to three, it would just be really low, but it'd still be playing. You know, but if you get it down there, it just goes away completely. So it's, I guess they're kind of, uh, they need to uh, redo these numbers somehow. Because when I turned it down to, to three, I just completely lost the music. So anyway, now that I can actually hear the music, it sounds fine. You know, I'm just not, not going to comment on it since I haven't really listened to <laughs> the whole soundtrack. Uh, just the little bits I'm hearing is it's cool. Uh, but, you know, that said, I don't think it's going to rise above the, the quality of the artwork here. Uh, so anyway, I think it really nails all the categories I would care about in terms of an adventure game. We've only really seen one good puzzle so far. You know, but if that's representative of what we, you know, will expect to see later on, that will be, you know, top-notch stuff. Hopefully, since it is an adventure game more than it's a role-playing game, uh, they'll ratchet that up so the puzzles will get increasingly more and more difficult and evolve as you go along, uh, which is what I look for. Something that's, you know, feels fair, but at the same time really gives you you know, some time to break out a notebook. <laughs> uh, think through the puzzles. Let's see if we can get to the next location. I guess the Stargate thing is the warden. Okay, then we have Chinzima. But I think if you're looking for something, I think the perfect audience for this game would be somebody that really liked uh, either one of those Fallout games or something like Torment, Tides, or a, a, a Planescape game. Or there's lots of other ones I could think of, uh, but they they feel more like exploring and um, solving puzzles and stuff like that more than they care about leveling up a character and getting into combat. So if that you know if that sounds like you, I think this would be a must-have game, or somebody that just likes good science fiction stories. If you like really good science fiction art, you're gonna keep coming back to that. But I think, I mean, come on. <laughs> the Hawker Theater Dome is close by. I wonder if it's still standing. You know that's gonna be the big selling point. Now, I haven't really played around with this dialogue enough to know. Like if we really tried to be a jerk. What well, what would be the impact of that? Would people stop following me? Would they, you know, how forked is the narrative? Uh, that I'm not sure of. Uh, it feels, um, you know, it doesn't feel linear uh, to me. But again, not something I can really comment on. Comment on at this point without playing it a couple different ways to see what, to see how it shakes out. It was barely livable when you were there. Must be a wreck by now. That place saved me. Well. Mr. Callan saved me. I was living on the streets when I met him. I had my bag, some extra beans, and that was it. He was also a vet. Said he was with Kufut. You know, when you get out of there, there's no debriefing. You sign your papers and it's just out. You're forgotten. I guess I haven't commented about voice the voice acting. Yeah, it works for me. It sounds a little bit off in some places, I'll be honest. Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about these. Uh, I didn't look to see the, take a look at the cast to see who they're working with, uh, uh, voice talent wise. You know, it's certainly not like bad enough to make you not want to play or be, or be distracting or, or anything like that. Uh, maybe just, you know, I think they got the perfect one for the, uh, for Pooch. Until you become someone else's problem, I didn't know that. That must have been hard. I really like where they're going with these these characters, though. I'm sorry, Don. It must have been hard. 
for a long time. I tried to live normally, but after a while, you just can't. It's always okay for a while. You do okay, and then it starts. You feel like you're being watched. You pack a bag, and you just wait for something to happen. You know the war is done on the outside, but inside, inside, it's always there. But Mr. Callan, he was good to me. He understood. He helped me. He even gave me my own drone to play music to help me sleep at night. Call him Buddy. Yeah, you can see from there. I mean, you're in good hands with this narrative-wise. Uh, if you remember, one of the great things about first a Planescape game was the the characters you met, getting into their backstories. You know, thinking about how you wanted to uh, roleplay those situations they they put you into. Uh, so they completely nailed all that here. And again, this is probably just the first maybe two, three hours of gameplay. Uh, so I'm going to you know, stop it here. I'd love to know if you're playing this as well, what your thoughts are on it. Uh, in the comments, you know, as always, if you're going to uh, say anything that might spoil it for somebody else, just put spoiler alert in front of it. Uh, but otherwise, you know, feel free to sound off. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on the game, especially anybody that's played it all the way through. You know, what do you think? Does it get better? Uh, does it have a satisfying ending? How... Uh, how many narrative directions does it go? What am I trying to say there? You know, how many choices do you get to make? I guess I could put it that way. How many meaningful choices do you get to make? Uh, you know, as you play this game. Uh, but I really love this. I'm going to keep playing it. I just uh, will stop recording it. <laughs> and when I do get to uh, the end, I'll let you know uh, how it went uh, for me. Uh, but again, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. If you want to get the game... You can certainly do that. It's, um, and of course, originally it was a Kickstarter. Let's see, how much is the game? I'll give you the latest price on it while I'm looking here. Uh, so it's $19.99 on Steam, and this is the, what I did, I bought the, what they call the Beautiful Desolation Deluxe Pack. I'm not actually sure what I got. <laughs> What's this come with? <laughs> I just noticed it was like a buck more, so I'm like, sure, why not? Uh, you know, give me the full package. So what it says, it says DLC. What is the DLC, though? Supporters pack. Okay, but what is in the pack? <laughs> oh, what is this? Okay, the supporters pack also includes the soundtrack which was created by one of the greatest video game composers of all time, Mick Gordon. Oh, now I'm feeling really bad at the point now. Uh, the music's probably amazing. Uh, Mick is a composer and sound designer whose work aims to transcend the perpetual boundary between music and context. Uh, well, that's, you know, the good news is I can certainly listen to that uh, tonight. Uh, digital. You also get a digital art book and wallpaper. And so that's normally seven bucks just by itself. All right. Or no, it's actually ten dollars. The supporters pack alone is ten bucks. But in this bundle they got going on, uh, Steam right now for it's twenty five percent off. So if you get both items, actually that's a better deal than twenty five percent. I don't know. Basically, it's a hell of a deal, folks. You get the the game itself, which is normally nineteen ninety nine. And then you get the, uh, for $22.48, you also get the supporters pack that has the soundtrack and the art book and uh, wallpapers and stuff. And I mean, quite honestly, it's kind of a, a no-brainer just in terms of, uh, you know, if you like this kind of game, you have to understand, you know, they need your support. <laughs> this isn't, you know, this isn't uh, one of those huge games that's going to make everybody uh, millions and millions of dollars, you know. It's to the point probably where... You know, I don't know, I'll ask him about this, but it's probably to the point where every cell, uh, you know, actually helps these guys uh, make their next game, you know, keeping them, uh, keeping them afloat. So I just, I have no problem, Let's go past you know, I'll throw in those few extra that. bucks, get the soundtrack, get the I wallpaper, whatever. I would never do that. Even if I never listened to it, at least I feel like I've helped these guys out and let them uh, continue to make great games. Anyway, as I said before, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll stop it here. I'm tempted just to keep going, but <laughs> you know, maybe I'll stream some more. 
uh, later. But anyways, I'll stop it here. Go get the game. Beautiful Desolation. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. I think you'll enjoy it. It's good stuff. See you later. And that's all for, the, for this week's episode. Man, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I really, really like this game. I think that probably came came across in the video. Uh, but just in case, man, you really got to you really got to uh, to get this. Uh, I didn't. I should have checked to see if it's on GOG, but it's definitely on Steam uh, for about twenty bucks. Uh, so go pick that up. And also, like I said in the video, I will be interviewing Chris, maybe his brother too. I'm not sure on that point. Uh, but at least uh, Chris Bischoff, who did the writing and did the artwork on the game, he will be on Matt Chat uh, for the next episode. So if you got questions about the game, he's also worked, of course, on a. Uh, what is it, Stasis, uh, a few other projects, I think. I didn't write those down. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions you would like me to ask uh, uh, Chris, just send them on, put them in the comments. You can uh, post them anywhere, really, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook. You know, better yet, become a patron. Uh, become one of the rat slayers on Patreon, and then you can ask me on uh, on there. You know, always pay attention to that for sure. Uh and oh, by the way, thank you very, very, very much for your support of the show. Guys, come on. I <laughs> I really just want you to know how much I appreciate you uh, stepping up to the plate like that and, you know, keeping these episodes coming. I mean, Matt Chat would have, what is this, 459 episodes? I mean, come on. You know, that would have been like four episodes, <laughs> you know, without you guys uh, chipping in here and, and keeping the, the show on the air. I know most people watching this probably already support the show, but if you know if you're in that uh, position where you're like, you know, I don't know, I don't really, you know, I got other stuff I need to do. I'll, you know, I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll sign up later. You know, you're doing that kind of thing. Uh, just do me a favor. Go ahead and click on over to that link in the show notes. Go to the Patreon site. You know, it takes maybe a minute or two to set that up, and and you can support the show. All I ask is one buck per episode. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully uh, you're in a position to do that. Uh, but, you know, if you know if times are tough for you, don't worry about it. I just enjoy the program. But I do really appreciate those uh, who support uh, Mad Chat uh, for obvious reasons. And don't forget, too, you can always uh, retweet the show. You can post about it on Facebook. You can just give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. Any of that stuff, I really appreciate it. And I want you to know I <laughs> am grateful to you. you know? <laughs> I'm grateful to you. Damn it. Uh, okay. Uh, what about that news from the man? Okay, quite a bit of news here. Uh, I've tried to winnow it down to three items. Uh, first one was posted by Adam, long term, a long time fan of the show, a friend of the show, I should say. Maybe he's a fan. I don't know. <laughs> Adam, are you a fan of the show? <laughs> I don't know if he'd want to admit that or not. Uh, anyway, he uh, wrote in about this rogue uh, game, <laughs> this rogue game. <laughs> yeah, the rogue, uh, the not not a rogue like. I'm talking about the real deal, rogue. <laughs> it's on uh, Steam now. And so they went. They found this Epic's version which as you probably know, that was the first effort to make a commercial version of it. Uh, it didn't do too well, uh, frankly, because they already people already had the free version, public domain, so this one didn't do too well commercially, didn't make a big profit for them. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at my interview with Glenn Wichman uh, back in the day. He talks about all that. But anyway, if you want to play the original, ver well, actually, it's not the original. This is Epic's Rogue version 1.49 for the IBM PC. So I'm not sure what all other systems it was on. This is the one that most people are probably familiar with, though, if you had the commercial version. Anyway, it's <laughs> a whopping $2.54. Oh, my God, it's going to break the bank. <laughs> oh, man, it's probably more than you paid for it back in the day, you scurvy pirate, you. Uh, so anyway, go pick it up. $2.54. Come on. You never know. You're going to want to play this at some point. And I don't feel like I really need to describe Rogue to you. Uh, just go take a look at it. You know, if if nothing else, you should buy it just to, <laughs> you know, compensate them somewhat for the uh, not making a lot of money back in the day. 
Uh, let's see, while you're on Steam, uh, you may or may not be interested in a little game called The Outer Worlds. I recently interviewed the uh, designer of that game here on Matt Chat, uh, but when I did that interview, the game was not on Steam. It actually took quite a way. It's just now coming out uh, on there. I should have wrote this down too. I don't know if it's on GOG yet. I think it's also on GOG. Uh, but anyway, if you don't have the game yet, you should pick it up because it is currently 50% off. So it's $29.99. I think there's some kind of super bundle you can get as well. Uh, but anyway, you know, I guess some people have their problems with it, sure. But it has won awards, and it's uh, uh, from Obsidian. <laughs> and Private Division had to uh, double-check my, my notes here. It, really, it seemed like, I don't know if my vision is getting worse, I'm getting older, or this text is getting smaller on the phone. <laughs> Maybe a combination of all three. Anyway, $29.99 for this, I think that's certainly a fair deal. And I do plan to review that game uh, probably after uh, this interview with, uh, with Chris. I'll probably do an interview, or a review rather, of The Outer World so you can get a good look at that. Uh, and then finally, if you are a fan of the Monkey Island games, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and guess that you are <laughs> a fan of that. And if you're not, what the heck is wrong with you? Uh, some of the best games I've ever played, period. Uh, I just, you know, I can't even say the name Monkey Island without feeling a little bit happier, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but anyway, you might have played the game, but you might not have the, the box copy, or maybe you have the box copy. That's still not enough for you. You want more collectibles. Well, you'll be happy to know that Limited Run Games, that's a company that's getting pretty good reputation for doing this stuff, uh, they have a $159.99 package uh, that you can pick up. It has all sorts of collectibles. Of course, it's got the a big, lovely box, uh, but you get artwork, you get some, uh, uh, let's see, a pin set, a disc, an old floppy disc. I don't know if you can actually run that or not. I didn't look into that. I just saw they had a disc there. There's a signed certificate of authenticity by none other than Ron Gilbert himself. There's also a six-inch six inch Guybrush statue, statuette, statue, and a shadow box, a multi-layered shadow box. <laughs> I don't know, it seems pretty cool to me. Uh, if you're a big fan of uh, the Monkey Island series, of course it has the games in there as well, the anthology. You know, I guess I, I'm trying to remember. Somebody had commented, and they had a nitpick about the the collection. I'm not, I'm blanking on what it was. But but anyway, check it out. You can you can see it for yourself. You know, 160 bucks. That's not chump change, but you know, I know for some people it'll be well worth that, and it will be, uh, you know, look look quite good on the shelf. All right, let's wrap her up with a quotation. And I was looking for quotations about art i mean <laughs> you know if beautiful desolation doesn't inspire some thoughts about art i, I don't know what will uh, but anyway it turns out there's quite a few artists out there who have made some really profound uh philosophies i guess about art but here's a really good quip and it's by edgar degas <laughs> degas <laughs> i know it's like degas anyway quote goes something like this Painting is easy when you don't know how, but very difficult when you do. So ponder on that and see you guys next time. Get to the weapons, use them any way you can. I know you won't break the rules. There aren't any.